Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so uh, in the in our last lecture we were discussing some preliminary about monopoly market right what is called monopoly market or what are its feature and all right so we will discuss today uh, a profit maximizing producers optimum output choice optimum or profit maximizing quantity choice of output okay so that we will discuss so do not forget that we are discussing all these alternative markets right under the ceteris paribus condition more specifically that we are taking the cost structure of the producer ok. Entire cost structure means whatever technology he is using kind of factor markets he is facing ok all those are under the ceteris paribus kind of thing. So, those we are not changing at all only what we are changing in the last lecture we discussed about competitive market. So, competitive product market. So, a producer I have certain cost structure ok. With that cost structure if I, I operate in a competitive product market what will be my optimum production decision. Alternatively if I operate in a product market which is monopoly kind of thing what will be my optimum product decision. Alternatively, if I operate in a say monopolistically competitive kind of product market, what will be my optimum decision and so on. So, every time we are taking the cost structure as, as if it is given ok. So, actually uh, certain other types of markets are there like called monopsony, it is just the opposite of monopoly. Monopoly is the single sellers market, monopsony is the single buyers market bilateral monopoly bilateral monopoly means in a market bilateral both way monopoly kind of thing a market where only single seller is there as well as only single buyer is there ok. So, this kind of market monopsony bilateral monopoly these kinds of markets we will not discuss exclusively or exhaustively in this uh, course, but in this course so four different markets we are we are di discussing in details uh, four different markets in the sense that a producer who is going to operate this four type any of these four type of product market what will be his or her optimum uh, production decision or optimum quantity choice in that sense. What are those four uh, different types of markets? One is perfectly competitive, perfectly competitive which we have already discussed ok. Then monopoly we are going to discuss today monopolistically competitive monopolistically competitive and oligopoly these four different types of markets we will discuss ok. So, perfectly competitive market discussion we have already finished monopoly we are going to discuss today and uh, monopolistically competitive and oligopoly market we will discuss sometimes later ok. So, so how these four different types of markets we can or which market will be called what type of market. So, basically how will depend. So, first you ask ok how many sellers are there in the market ok. So, first question is how many producers, how many producers or how many sellers ok. If answer is say 1 it is called monopoly, if answer is say few here 1 how many sellers are there in the market? One seller is there ok. So, then market will be called monopoly. Answer is few, few number of sellers are there 5, 6, 2, 3 like that ok. So, when answer is few it will be called oligopoly. If the answer is alternative th three alternative answer can be there only one seller, few sellers, many sellers. If answer is many then you are posing another question here another question what is that what is that product type product type ok product type means whether the 
many sellers are there in the market no all those sellers are selling the identical product or not homogeneous product or not if answer is yes or product is homogeneous homogeneous product or identical product homogeneous we can tell identical also identical product then it will be called perfectly competitive perfectly competitive i am telling pc perfectly competitive and if the product type is differentiated then it will be called monopolistically competitive so perfectly competitive we can tell pc monopoly is simply m monopolistically competitive is mc and oligopoly is o okay so in this particular case this is m this particular case this is o this particular case pc this particular case it is mc monopolistically competitive so product is differentiated we will we will discuss monopolistically competitive market where when we introduced monopoly you you understand or you if you can remember in the last lecture we told that only single seller is there not only that the product what that seller is selling in the market there is no close substitute available okay so single product okay here uh, product is differentiated when the market is monopolistically competitive kind product is differentiated means uh, sellers are selling different product but those products are very close substitute to each other like say bath soap market right bath soap market indian bath soap market if you see you no know, a uh, lot of varieties of bath soaps are available right say piers lux life boy vivel okay so many dove park avenue so many different varieties of all are bath soap only okay so that kind of markets are called monopolistically competitive market okay other features of those uh, details feature of those kinds of market monopolistically competitive market oligopoly market we will discuss discuss one by one so let us today discuss what will be the equilibrium of a producer who is operating in a monopoly kind of product market okay okay so of course we are taking that producer's cost structure as given so kind of cost curves we have taken for the competitive market okay same type of cost structure or cost curves we will take right say suppose uh, say if it is a short run case right say suppose this is average total cost curve is there atc okay atc suppose say this is average variable cost curve is there and this is mc marginal cost curve is there okay of course we are measuring quantity in the horizontal axis and price all types of revenues all types of cost whatever we will measure all in the vertical axis and as many variables we are measuring in the vertical axis that many different curves will come within this panel okay now the question is so cost structure is given and my profit that monopoly producer his profit depends on revenue minus cost right so cost structure we know what is the revenue structure so if i i i produce two units of output three units of output five units of output right i have to i have to know whether uh, demand for my product is there in the market right so that demand curve okay will tell me that if i produce and i sell okay in the market what kind of price i will get demand curve is basically a price line no if you can understand or remember we are measuring quantity this side and price that side okay and demand curve suppose this kind of downward sloping demand curve we are getting that means what this kind of demand curve if we know that this kind of demand curve is there for my product in the market or customers willingness to buy purchase my product that is reflected by this kind of demand curve so it is indirectly telling to me that if i want to produce this much i can set this much price for my product of the each unit of my product if i want to sell this many of uh, product right perhaps i have to set this much of price per unit of the commodity and so on right so that demand curve is indirectly reflecting what different what kind of price i will get depending on my quantity decision how much quantity i am producing and i am trying to sell that or willing to sell that in the market right so we have to first know what is the demand curve for my product or for that monopoly type of producer who is there his product in the market okay so uh, in competitive market if you can understand uh, a single producer who is operating in a competitive kind of product market demand curve for his product okay it is horizontal what we have discussed okay this kind of demand curve was there okay in a competitive market 
but in the monopoly market what kind of demand curve will be there ok. Monopoly market actually demand curve will be downward sloping say suppose this is the demand curve this is the demand curve A D is the demand curve ok. Now, the question is in monopoly market why the demand curve will be A D or uh, this kind of downward sloping for, for the ease of our understanding let us assume that it is downward sloping straight line ok straight line ok. But uh, the discussion it does not require that our demand curve should be straight line we are taking that straight line for ease of our understanding ok. So, A D type of uh, downward sloping the first question is why in a monopoly market demand curve will be straight line for I am a producer ok for uh, demand for my product ok which is reflected by the demand curve why that will be downward sloping. Look I am a monopoly producer right. So, I am the only seller in that market that means, whatever the market demand curve is there that is the demand curve for me also because other than me no, no other seller is there for that product in the market right. So, whatever the entire market demand curve is there that is my demand curve ok. If you can remember in the competitive market we told that price is determined by the demand supply force in the entire market and uh, none of the uh, single seller or buyer have any control over market price ok and market price is determined by demand supply force this is the market price prevailing in that market and everybody is a price taker there right that we told. But here this was the market demand curve that same market demand curve is the demand curve for me because I am the single seller of that product and no other uh, no, nobody else is there in that market to sell that same product ok. So, actually demand curve so I hope you, you understood that demand curve will be downward sloping here because the entire market demand curve is that single producers demand curve who is operating or uh, since the market is a monopoly kind of a market. So, this is the demand curve right. So, what is the profit maximizing? So, if we want to maximize his profit taking his quantity choice of the output quantity. So, quantity variable output quantity is the choice variable here right. We know that first order profit maximizing condition is MR equals to MC ok and second order condition is uh, slope of MR should be less than uh, slope of MC that we, we know right slope of MC right. So, first we have to know that what is his marginal revenue line ok. If we know that marginal revenue line exactly if you can remember in the competitive market we have some marginal revenue line this kind of marginal cost curve we have. So, we are looking at where this these two conditions are satisfied. MR equals to MC and slope of MR is less than slope of MC ok. That point we are, we are telling that that is the equilibrium point ok. And that point corresponding to the quantity axis that was the equilibrium quantity uh, that producer should produce. Equilibrium means profit maximizing quantity that kind of answer we got exactly that way if we have here what is the marginal revenue line. So, we can draw that marginal revenue curve and then using that marginal revenue curve and marginal cost curve these two condition we can uh, validate accordingly we can decide right. Look here our choice variable is the quantity output quantity how much that producer is going to producer is deciding how much quantity I will produce ok ok. So, if the demand curve is this demand curve is basically price line right this price line this look at here this demand curve we are measuring price in the vertical axis and horizontal in the axis we are measuring quantity right. So, basically we are measuring price the way we have uh, we are writing here the demand curve as if price equals to some function of quantity right in that way. And since we are taking the demand curve to be linear downward sloping right usual downward sloping demand curve, but it is a linear thing I can tell it is explicit form this is implicit form ok. It is explicit form something A minus B Q kind of thing where this O A this distance is basically is capi, a small a ok and slope of this A D line is basically minus B right. So, O A this is equals to A and slope of slope of A D line A D uh, car is equals to minus B. Then this is the equation of my demand curve 
Okay. If this is the case, what will be the total revenue of that producer? Total revenue is basically price into quantity. So, this is the price. So, it will be A minus BQ that is the price into quantity, right. So, that we can tell that that will be AQ minus BQ square, okay. If that is the case, what will be marginal revenue? Marginal revenue by definition we know del total revenue del Q, okay. Due to change in your quantity, how much or how your total revenue will change, that is the definition of marginal revenue. So, if you take that derivative or with respect to quantity of this equation because this is the total revenue, you will get that it will be A minus twice B Q. So, if we have a linear demand curve downward sloping usual whose equation is A minus B Q, we will have in the MR line marginal revenue curve that is also will be straight line that will also have the same vertical intercept like demand curve, but its slope will be the double negative double and demand curve slope was minus b, marginal revenue curve slope is minus twice b. Okay. So, definitely this kind of line we will get marginal revenue, marginal revenue line. Okay. Same vertical intercept, demand curve and marginal revenue curve are originating from the vertical axis the same point okay. and marginal revenue curve will be having a double slope. Okay, absolute slope in uh, slope in absolute number, it is double than the slope of the demand curve uh, okay, when this demand curve is straight line. Okay. And what is the implication of slope is double in this way? For every possible price, for every possible price whatever we can think of, right? this distance is basically half of this distance. This distance is half of this distance. So, everywhere red color distance, red color second bracketed term distance is half of the green color second bracketed distance. Okay. That is the that is the meaning of the that is the implication of the slope of the double right aha that you can easily do no. Slope of this curve means this by this right and slope of this curve is basically this by this with of course a negative sign both of them are downward sloping right with a negative sign right. So, you can easily understand that if this curve's slope is double of this curve, right? Definitely, this distance will be half of this distance, and so on for all possible price in this side. All possible price, whatever price we can think of, all possible price, this distance will be exactly half of that distance. Okay. So now, the task is easy. We we know what is the marginal revenue curve. We know the what is the demand curve, and all the cost curves are there, right? So let us draw. Uh, the diagram appraise. So, we know. So, suppose uh, this is the average total cost curve ATC line as usual of course, we are measuring quantity here price, revenues, cost all we are measuring in the vertical axis right. This is the origin. Okay. So, suppose uh, this is the average variable cost line it is a short run we are talking about this is the marginal cost line right. Suppose this is the demand curve AD okay, and say this is the MR line. Okay. So, definitely let me draw MR line a little bit differently. Okay, and suppose this is the MR line. Okay. So, M R equals to M C the first order condition and second order condition is slope of the M R should be uh, smaller than the slope of M C line. So, wh where is that? Both the conditions are satisfied here. Because this is the M C line right. So, M R and M C so both the conditions are satisfied here M R equals to M C and here the slope of M R is negative and slope of MC is either positive or maybe 0 like that okay? because it uh, looks like the this is the lowest point then it is the positive. Okay? 
So, definitely both the conditions of profit maximization are satisfied right. So, this since this is the equilibrium point what is the implication of that equilibrium point? It is telling that this much output quantity that monopoly producer should produce this masses suppose this is denoted by O q star ok. Why we are we are taking first output quantity because look at here the profit maximizing equation no what was our choice variable our choice variable was the quantity. So, use whatever through that process taking quantity as the choice variable. Okay, whatever two conditions we are reaching m r equals to m c and the second order condition where you are reaching those conditions if we satisfy those will give you the optimum value of the choice variable first. So, that is giving you the this is the choice variable ok. So, choice variables optimum quantity is q star it is given. Now, so this is telling that to maximize his profit that producer who is facing this kind of cost structure cost structure is given by these three cost curves, he should produce this much of quantity of that product. Now, that producer is asking himself, if I want to produce or I want to sell this much of quantity of output to that market right, what price I can set? Here, since the producer is a sole tiger in the market, he is the only seller of that product in the market right, he is a price maker here unlike the competitive market everybody was price taker here he is a price maker. He will decide how much price he will set for his product ok. So, first we are getting let me repeat again first we are getting what is the optimum value of the quantity ok. Now, that is telling that ok suppose this OQ star amount is 100. So, it is telling that you should produce 100 units of output. Now, I am asking myself Yes, I will produce 100 units of output by producing 100 units of output I can maximize my profit, but how much price I should set for my product price means for each unit of my product ok. So, that uh, it is guaranteed that all my 100 units whatever I produce that will be sold in the market. So, definitely if we if we extend this line vertically if we go of course, if we set this price that is guaranteeing that all of his product will be sold in the market because this many customers are there in the market whose maximum willingness to pay for this product is either this price or more than that. Look the demand curve this demand curve has this segment ok where the people who are the customer potential customers their maximum willingness to pay is either this distance this much price or more than that. So, out of those this much or more than that he is choosing the lowest amount of those things. So, this is the lowest amount of the price. So, he is asking himself that what price I should set for my product for each unit of my product and that answer is that if I set this price for each unit of my product that will be guaranteeing that all my products will be sold in the market ok. So, obviously, he will set this price ok and uh, he will find enough number of customers for his product whatever say 100 units or OQ star units in general whatever he is producing ok. So, that is the thing and as a result let me let me draw this diagram a phrase ok. ok ATC line ATC line MRS total cost line ABC MC demand curve AD and MR line ok. So, MR equals to MC this is MC this is MR. So, this point ok. So, first thing O this is Q star. So, O Q star amount of output he should produce and he should set O P star this much price for each unit of his output ok. So, now if we ask how much profit that producer will get of course, it is very easy because this is the price per unit. So, this larger box ok, suppose this point is say P ok. 
so p star p q star o this rectangular area is his total revenue right because this much quantity into that much price that is the total revenue okay what is his total cost total cost is basically look at here if he produce o q star amount of output per unit of the product what total cost or what average total cost he is facing this is his average total cost line so say suppose this is m and this is n so m n q star o that is his total cost okay so definitely this blue shaded rectangular area representing his profit that is his profit okay and that is his maximum amount of profit now we will try to understand we will prove now that this point this p point is basically always uh, this p point will always lie on the elastic segment of his demand curve this is the demand curve no ad is the demand curve see by looking at if you extend this demand curve no wherever it will hit the horizontal axis right you can easily understand that this point is uh, left hand side of the midpoint of this demand curve right so we are getting from the diagram as impression that it is always in the elastic if, if you can remember this is the if this is the midpoint of the demand curve this side is the that portion of the demand curve where elasticity of demand price elasticity of demand is always less than 1 at this point it is 1 and at this segment any point it is greater than 1 ok lower portion by the upper portion if you can remember elastic of course with a negative sign minus at this point elasticity value is minus 1 ok so so th that's the thing so this region this segment we can tell the elastic segment of his demand curve right so we are getting an impression that monopoly's equilibrium will perhaps fall on the elastic segment of his demand curve ok let us prove that why that will be true ok so profit maximizing condition first order condition is basically mr equals to mc right in the competitive market mr was exactly equals to price right because price was independent of quantity right because you are price taker and what is the existing price was there in the in the market you can produce as many you, you want ok everything will be sold of your product at, at that price level right but here price is a function of quantity right because look at here your price line or the demand curve is downward sloping different quantity if you produce this much of quantity you can set that much of price per unit quantity if you produce this much of quantity you can set that much price per unit of quantity this much quantity you have you can set that much price per unit of quantity and so on why you can set different price because otherwise your product will not be sold all all of your product will not be sold maybe some will be unsold ok that is the thing so essentially price is a function of the quantity and that is why when we and uh, this kind of implicit form when we explicitly uh, uh, wrote uh, we told a minus b q kind of thing explicit form right ok. So, in this particular case m r is what m r we have done. So, m r equals to m c. So, m c was there ok and m r was basically price as a function of quantity into quantity that is the total revenue right. So, m r must be del del q of that thing ok m r equals to m c condition is telling. So, this will tell right hand side will be your m c if you take derivative of this component in general ok when we do not know that this kind of explicit form is there right in general implicit form p as a function of q if it is there if you take the derivative with respect to q what you will get it will be price itself because price into del q del q that component plus q into del p del q that is equals to mc. So, mr if I take say price common ok. So, it will be 1 plus q by p into del p del q left hand side ok and right hand side equals to mc right that will be equals to mc that is your condition. So, left hand side this equation I can write price whole into 1 1 upon elasticity look at here elasticity of demand price elastic own price elasticity of demand is what it is basically by definition elasticity of demand own price elasticity of demand ok is basically del q del p into p by q if you 
you can remember we have discussed that earlier ok. And here what is that it is just the exactly the reciprocal of that. So, I am writing that 1 upon E. Since demand curve is downward sloping in usual case that del Q by del P is negative right. So, elasticity value is negative always. So, if I write absolute elasticity value this plus sign I can write with a negative sign minus ok. So, basically that equals to MC. So, we are getting MR equals to price whole into 1 minus 1 upon E, E in a absolute value right. Now, so when you are producing something your MC is something positive right, some marginal cost you are incurring additional unit of the product what you are producing ok, you are incurring more cost. So, marginal cost is something positive. So, to make that something positive in the left hand side price though will be something positive right. So, what elasticity value should be ok. So, elasticity value will be in that case definitely greater than 1. If elasticity absolute value is greater than 1 then this will be a fraction 1 minus that fraction will be another positive fraction price into that positive fraction something positive left hand side right hand side something positive. If elasticity is less than 1 then what will happen 1 by elasticity this component will be a greater than 1, 1 minus that component will be the negative thing price into that negative price is the something positive. So, price into that thing will be negative. So, your MR will be negative MC will be positive they cannot be equal. Okay. And if elasticity is exactly 1 that time this will be 1 by 1, 1 minus 1 this will be 0, it will be till price into 0 as if your MC equals to 0. Unless your MC equals to 0 that kind of condition will not be satisfied. So, we can see that only satisfiable condition, only tolerable condition is that when your absolute value elasticity is always greater than 1, right. So, that is why we are telling that of course, monopoly will attain his equilibrium quantity choice or equilibrium uh, altogether both combination of quantity and price that should fall on the elastic segment of his demand curve. And why that is the case this equation is telling that this equation is not there in your book, but, but the, the way we are discussing uh, none of you will be uh, facing any difficulty to follow this thing ok. Let us stop here we will continue now the in the next lecture that whatever the social uh, social welfare implication of monopoly and so on ok ok let us stop here.